Hi, my name is Rahul Sood and I'm class of 20, University of Pennsylvania, studying Neurobiology in the college and Statistics at Warden. Um, so welcome to the chapter room. This is the chapter room of Fiji here at Penn. Um, so Fiji is the short name for my fraternity, Phi Gamma Delta. Um, and uh, Penn's quite unique in that fraternity life's quite popular. I think something like 30% of undergraduates join a fraternity or sorority. Um, me personally, I didn't have a lot of interest or even knowledge about fraternity life and social life at, in America um, because I was from New Zealand, born and raised there. Um, so I kind of walked into the whole social scene and fraternity life, kind of just curious, interested, um, went to a couple of events, um, met some brothers, um, and yeah, just like the people. And I think at the end of the day, that's what it is, just a bunch of like-minded people who share similar interests but come from a diverse set of backgrounds. Um, and yeah, life living here is, I guess like any other dorm room, except it's 20 of your best friends. Um, in this house here, we have about yeah, 20, 20 singles um, and a couple of shared doubles. Yeah, it's a really unique house. I think we're really privileged to, to be able to live in this space. Um, I think this house goes back to the founding of the university um, and the fact that we can just live here and, and kind of um, be ourselves amongst the history, the books, um, the, the wooden tables who have been here longer than you know our grandparents, I think is a, is a huge, huge privilege. So one of my favorite things about Penn is just the vast array of food trucks we have on campus. Super cheap food, amazing food, hot, fast, everything you want. One of my favorites is Terry's. They treat you right. I just come here, give them the nod, they give me my usual sandwich every morning. Um, some people have differing opinions. Some, some say Lynn's makes the best breakfast sandwiches. I beg to differ. Terry's is where it's at. So if you're ever around, definitely hit up Terry's. It's a whole wheat toast, bacon, egg and cheese, all standard, salt and pepper. Secret ingredient, sliced avocado. Secret, secret ingredient, buffalo hot sauce, Frank's buffalo hot sauce, with some mayonnaise. Um, and there you go. So this is Lighty Labs, this is the main biology building. So most of my biology classes throughout the three years have been in here. Um, and behind it, they've made a new building, um, Levin Lab, which is um, the neuroscience building. So let's go on through and see what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so this is the Lighty Lab 10, I think is the main auditorium in the biology building. So any like big class with more than like 50 people would be in, in this auditorium. Have you taken classes in here? Yeah, actually most of my biology uh, lectures have been in here. Very yeah. cool. So how would you describe the academic culture at Penn? I would, I would describe it as pretty intense. I think it's just a product of who, who comes here, selects for a certain type of people who are very, you know, interested in what they're doing and want to do the best uh, of, of their abilities. Um, but it's also, there's a, there's a ton of opportunities, which is what I really like. Um, whatever you're interested in, whatever niche, um, you know, within biology, there's neuroscience, within neuroscience there's neurobiology. Whatever that is, you can find it mm -hmm. and you can find the best professors people who are equally as interested in it as you are. So you have two majors, right? Statistics and neurobiology. So how does that work and like how, how are those majors structured? Sure, so there are a couple of dual degree uh, programs here at Penn. Um, so the one I'm part of is uh, the Vagilos program in life science and management. So the philosophy of my program is um, to teach scientists to also be able to delve into business. Um, so in that regard, uh, people in my program get two degrees, one from Warden, um, and you can concentrate on whichever uh, subject you like. I chose statistics and then also in biology. And in that case, I chose neurobiology. 
How cool, so you actually, you get degrees from two different schools. Yeah, and it's, it's, nice. it's cool because you don't have to do all the requirements that are required by the separate degrees, mm -hmm. since it's an integrated dual degree program. Right. Um, so they try to uh, double count classes, or you take classes that are life science and management-esque rather than just business or science. Gotcha. So that's really cool. So is the, is the statistical work you're doing in any way related to like biostatistics or is it really like more of a business centered statistics? Um, it's, it's a bit of both. Um, and I think that's why I chose statistics because it works so well with biology. Mm -hmm. And as a scientist, statistics is a major tool and a very useful one. Um, but it's also cool to apply it to business problems. Um, so I was taking like a data mining course this semester and um, it was awesome to in class, we would see how it applied to you know stock prices and how to price different um, assets. Um, but then I could use those same skills to apply it to my lab in the psychiatry department, um, nice. looking at different disorders. So. Mm So how do you see your majors either combining or separately applying to what you are looking to do after you graduate? Sure, so I think on a broad level, uh, business and science go like hand in hand. Um, I think a huge problem scientists have is trying to think broad picture and see how their discoveries or what they're interested in can be practically applied. Um, so what I'm interested in is very much that. Um, how can I apply um, uh, my interest in psychiatry and neurobiology, um, think of therapeutic potentials of different indications mm -hmm. and how to apply that in a business setting. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so that way you're not just limited to only being on the science side, you can also be a part of, you know, how, how do we scale this? How do we, how do we make this functional? Exactly, yeah, and, and it uses different parts of the brain, right? So in the lab, you're very focused on the minutia and, and the small mechanisms, whereas when you think about business, you have to think of the broad picture and, and a more managerial sense rather than a scientific one. Right. So outside of those, are there any courses that you need to take that aren't a part of either major, like general requirements? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of schools like this, um, the liberal arts aspect. Um, so there are free electives, you have to take around, I think, 15 free elective classes. So that can be any um, class that doesn't go toward your ma major. Mm -hmm. And there's also sector requirements, um, like uh, you have to take a humanities class, you have to take uh, a, a cultural class. Um, so for example, this semester I was taking a Arabic percussion, cl per percussion class. And we oh, had cool. a, yeah, it was really, really cool. It was something different. Yeah, that's not very science-y or very exactly. statistic-y. Yeah, it changes the rhythm quite literally. And uh, we had like a final performance a couple of weeks ago, which was just fun to do. Yeah. With friends, yeah. That's so cool. So do you think that's a benefit or a drawback? Like, do you like that you have to take courses that don't apply to your major? Or is it like, I really wish I didn't have to do all this extra stuff? Oh, I think it's a huge benefit. I think if you want to be a truly informed citizen and, and think clearly you should be able to do in a variety of fields and, and see how different fields use different lenses to approach sometimes even the same problem. Okay, so what you see happening behind me is a procession of juniors. So this is heyday, this symbolizes the juniors becoming seniors. So they walk, they start walking at the end of one campus and they finish out just over here at College Green. Um, and it happens once a year and it's always a fun time. Why did you decide to come to the US for school instead of say New Zealand? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think when you live in New Zealand, like New Zealand's amazing, but it's so far away from the rest of the world. Um, and also in terms of opportunity, we only have 4 million people. Um, so we do a lot with our weight, but there's only so much. So right. especially as a young person, I wanted to see the, the big scary world. And mm -hmm. this was one of the ways I thought I could do that. What advice would you have for other students from New Zealand or from other countries who are thinking about coming overseas for school, particularly to the US? I think the biggest point that I uh, overlooked is visiting the campuses. Um, the schools I got into, I actually didn't even come visit each of them. And I think knowing the vibe and just walking around, and not even just one day, maybe around on different days, different times of the academic schedule, mm -hmm. gives you a huge feel for what it would like, be like to live here. 
um, and I think it's easy to overlook that looking at you know more on uh, the prestige or like what subjects are offered um, that might overshadow the simple day-to-day -day life which is at the end of the day the most important part. If you like this video and want to learn more about top colleges around the world, please like and subscribe.